Hello everyone, this is Bob. It is Saturday, the 12th of January, 2019, and this will be my first garden update video of the year. This will be a virtual tour of the garden. I want to show you what we're going to grow this year and where we're going to grow it. Um, first of all, this uh, map here is how I plan the garden, and the, this plot here is a scale plot of the west bed. This is a scale plot of the east bed. You can see they're equal sized cells that are each one square foot. And then down here, I've got a new addition to the garden. This spring we plan to build sort of a, a larger non square foot gardening bed to grow some bigger plants that we can't fit into the square foot beds. So that's really exciting. Um, but anyway, I want to go through all of these cells and show you what we're going to grow. Um, there, there's actually two plans. Um, last year, we kind of planned our garden um, you know, from the spring forward. This year, we planned it from the fall backward. So we're, we're focusing a lot on fall planting and then trying to just fit things in in the spring um, before those things need to go in. Anyway, um, let me get a better zoom on this. Okay, um, in the west bed, the first cell, um, in the spring we're gonna go grow radishes. These will be the Roxanne hybrid radish, which is the same one we grew last year. Uh, we ordered more seeds. They worked great for us last year. Um, we really liked how quick they grew and how they tasted. So we're gonna do the same thing again. Um, the next two cells we're going to leave empty for the spring because we're going to need them pretty early um, for like tomatoes or I don't, I don't know what we have. I'll, I'll show you in a bit. Uh, this last cell here, we're going to do radishes again in the spring. The same ones, Roxanne hybrid. Okay, in this cell, we're going to do rainbow carrots in the spring. Um, this, these are the same carrots we grew last year. We had sort of mixed success with them, um, but you know they grew okay, and we've got a bunch of seeds left, so we're going to give it another shot. Okay, in a cell next to that, we're going to grow the heirloom cutting mix lettuce, uh, which we got um, free from Young last year. Young seeds, or Jung, I don't know how it's pronounced. I don't care either. Um, the, we really liked how these grew last year, and it's nice to have a little bit of variety. So we're going to try it again. In the next cell, we're going to grow our Darkabor Hybrid Kale. Same one we grew last year. Same seed packet as last year. This is like your grocery store kale. Um, you know, curly leaf, green. It, it grows really well. It's really frost tolerant. And it's pretty heat tolerant to... Um, it, it's just it's hard to go wrong with kale. You know, if, if you like kale... It's an easy thing to grow, um, and it, you know you can just keep harvesting it over and over again. Okay, the next cell, we're going to do the uh, warrior hybrid bunching onions. I always call them scallions in the garden videos. We grew these last year. Um, yeah, we, we didn't have any, like I think, fully developed ones last year, but we had enough to eat. Um, I, I'm trying to give them a little bit more time this year, so hopefully we'll have better success. They're just a fun thing to have around, you know, if you need like one green onion to garnish something. Okay, uh, the next cell, we've got our buttercrunch lettuce, which again, we grew last year, same seeds. You know, we're trying to use as many of the same seeds as we can. Um, I stored them in the fridge in a jar with desiccant packets. So hopefully all the seeds will be viable or at least most of them. Um, but this is just your, your butter lettuce. Um, you know, like soft leaves, not not the crunchiest leaves, but they're very sweet um, and very tender. It's it's a great a great plant. We both love it. The next cell we've got oregano. Um, I you know we planted it in the same spot last year, and it, oh, this is the wrong link. Uh, well, okay. I think you can imagine what oregano looks like, right? Oh, there it is. <clears throat> um, we planted it in the same spot last year. And it took a long time for it to come up. And, you know, I know it's supposed to be perennial, but I don't know much about, like, the actual horticulture of it. Um, 
you know, if if we let it go to enough degree of maturity that it's going to come back, I've I've got no idea. So we'll see what happens. If none comes up this year, we'll plant some more in the same spot. Okay, the next cell, we've got our large leaf basil. Again, same seeds as last year. This is sort of your classic basil, your supermarket basil. It's, it's you know it smells great. The leaves are really tender and they're you know this nice dark green, uh, beautiful plant. Can't go wrong. The next cell we've got the scallions again, so I won't show you that. Uh, after that, it's uh, chard, which which we struggled to grow last year. Like I bought the seeds late in the season because I heard something on the radio about how great it is to grow chard. Um, it, we just got, never got it to take off. So this year, um, we're going to try to be more deliberate about it, take better care of it, protect it from, um, you know, like squirrels and stuff <laughs> who dug up some of the seeds. And hopefully we'll have better success this year. Um, the next cell is the heirloom cutting mix lettuce again, so I won't show you that. Uh, here's a new one for this year. Stephanie wanted to try growing beets, so she picked out this classic round red beet. Um, so it'll be exciting to have those where we can eat, you know, the, the tops, the greens, and the beets. Um, and, you know, I just love growing root crops in general, so any anytime I can add a root crop, I'm happy. So that'll be interesting. Okay, the next cell is, again, some more beets. And then in the east bed, we've got radishes, the same uh, Roxanne hybrid. Two empty cells for some summer planting. Uh, radishes again. Then we've got something we haven't had since last spring. That's the Avon hybrid spinach. Uh, you know, this is the first thing in our garden to bolt when the weather got warm. But before that, it was really productive. It grew really fast and you know, it tastes really good. It's nice to have a mixture of greens. So we're growing it again and again, and I've got the same seeds as last year, so I'm not spending money on more. Okay, then we've got some more chard, the rainbow carrots again, more chard, more heirloom cutting mix, a cell we're holding open for the summer, some more Avon spinach, some more of the same kale, more buttercrunch lettuce, more basil. Finally, we've got a change of pace here. We've got some Italian parsley. Last year, this this was a rock star. We grew like two or three cells of this in the square foot garden, and it it just kept producing. It was really delicious. Um, you know, it it produced it right up until the frost, basically. Like you know, we took it out right at the end of the season. It was great to have around because you know when you buy parsley from the store. I don't know about you, but I tend to not use all of it, so it's nice to just be able to pick what you want. Great plant, highly recommend it. And then in the final cell in the spring, we've got, uh, we're going to try again chives, similar um, to the oregano. They're a perennial. We tried to get them started last year, but last year they were really badly shaded by our um, Vermont cranberry dry shelling beans. So we'll try again this year. And I picked a spot that hopefully we can leave them in. Okay, that is the spring plan. Um, in, in this new bed we're going to build down here, um, we'll probably plant some things in the spring, but I'm just not going to plan for it. You know, maybe we'll put in some spinach and some radishes, but you know, the succession isn't as important. So I'm not going to give a lot of mental energy to what exactly goes in there and when it goes. Okay. Uh, in the fall, got the same map here, um, but quite, quite a different story. I, I said fall I actually means summer slash fall. It's basically... This plan represents sort of mid-June to the end of the season. Um, some of the things will come out in June and have to be replaced. And then some things will come out in like July and have to be replaced. Um, but th th this will take us right up to the frost. So the first cell uh, that we had r r radishes in in the spring, we're going to put in... Oh, see, I clicked the wrong link again. You'd think that... I, you know, clicking links wouldn't be so difficult, but I'm making it look very challenging. Okay. So uh, in this first cell, we're going to do the Sun Gold Hybrid Tomato. Uh, we did not do this last year. Stephanie picked this one out. It's another sort of orangish color cherry tomato, indeterminate vining plant. 
So we hope to get you know some more of those little candy-like tomatoes that produce all season. Uh, so that, that'll be exciting to see how that grows. The next cell is something we grew last year. Those are the green arrow peas. I really liked how they turned out last year. You know, it's nice to have them develop and produce early in the season when a lot of other vegetables are not doing much. Um, yeah, same same seeds as last year. Hopefully, we'll get some growth. Um, and this year, uh, last year we took them down so we could plant something else for the summer. This year, we're going to leave them up and hopefully get a second crop. I, yeah, I heard from someone at work that that would work. I, I don't know. We'll try it. It's all about experimenting. The next cell is, again, another throwback to last year, the Vermont Cranberry Dry Shelling Bean. Um, th these are really impressive-looking beans. They add really cool color to the garden. I think you can probably remember some of my videos from last year. They've got these really rich red pods, like kind of obscenely red. Um, they're really fun to grow, and they produce pretty well by the end of the season, so we're excited to try those again. Uh, the next one is another new tomato. This one, there's a, an inspiration for this. I chose this one. It's the Lemon Boy Hybrid Tomato. And the inspiration was um, a few years ago, my friend and colleague Lois Baker had some extra yellow tomatoes. I don't know if they were this variety, but she gave a few to me and we made pizza with them just with slices of tomato on it. And they were so delicious and the color was incredible. And I'm excited to see if we can get some similar fruit. So Lois, this one is all you. Okay, the next cell, we've got some more scallions. I won't show you uh, the website because we've seen those already. Uh, same here with parsley in the next cell. And more scallions here. More carrots here. This is you know, part of our fall crop of carrots, which last year we had some that were maturing in the fall but then the ground froze before they got like to full size for the most part okay more parsley the oregano that i already mentioned and here's another new one um we wanted to grow like watermelon radishes so we ordered these from young's um they call it the red meat radish you know at, when we go to the grocery store this is what they call a watermelon radish cool color sort of fun you know they taste good um I found it interesting that the seed packet calls it a daikon radish instead of just like a radish radish. I don't know what the difference is, but the packet said explicitly to not plant it in the spring. It said it's, you know, it's for fall growth. So that's why it's uh, going to go in in July. Okay, uh, the next one are the same rainbow carrots. Again, uh, some more spinach, spinach, and then we've got cilantro. Uh, I'm sad that we didn't have any room for it in the spring, but I'm hoping with an early planting in the summer we can get some for fall. This is the same one we grew last year. It didn't produce as much as the parsley did, but it was still really delicious, nice to have around, and pretty successful. So we'll we'll ha be happy to welcome that one back. Okay, uh, here this this one I'm excited about. Last year I had a lot of brassica failures you know we got one head of broccoli out of the you know i don't know half a dozen or so broccolis and cauliflowers that we planted um i've done a lot of research and you know what i've heard is that cauliflower you're much better off planting it in the fall or for fall harvest i should say instead of in the spring because spring is much less predictable temperature wise and Brassicas, especially cauliflower, hate hot weather and won't even form a head, uh, you know, like a, a the kind of head that you buy at the grocery store, if the weather gets too hot. Which I was surprised by because I thought, you know, you usually hear about vegetables tasting bad when it gets hot, but I guess the cauliflower won't even form. So anyway, we're going to plant it in mid-July and hope to get some of that in September or October. And again, it's this cool Romanesco type that's got these like fractal shapes. So we're hoping for better luck this year. Okay, in the east bed, we've got the familiar sun sugar tomato. It looks like the sun gold one, but this is the same one that we grew last year. Um, it produced early, it produced all season, it produced a lot. The fruits are really delicious. It's highly disease tolerant. Um, 
you know, it was, it was the healthiest tomato plant we had by far. You know, we, I don't think you can go wrong with this. It was, it was so good to have around. So I'm happy to grow it again in 2019. Uh, the next cell, we've got our green beans, Blue Lake Pole Beans. This plant last year was a favorite of the Japanese beetles, but they didn't stunt the growth of the beans at all. Um, we got tons and tons and tons of beans and the vines were huge. Um, you know, it, it took a long time before we started getting beans. You know, I think it was probably the end of July, but then it just went nuts. So excited to have that one back. Uh, the next cell are the same peas that we grew last year and are in the west bed. Uh, after that, we've got the Harmony Hybrid Cucumber, which again, we grew last year. This was a rock star. Um, we got tons of cucumbers. They tasted great. Um, when we had too many, we pickled them, and that worked out worked out great. Um, to, you know, it's, again, just a really nice plant to have around if you need like an extra vegetable for a salad or something. And it just kept going, you know, right right into the fall until the I think the day length got too short, and then that's when it kind of stopped producing. It didn't freeze. Anyway. Uh, the next cell, we're moving our Thai chili peppers that we grew last year in a bucket or a planter, I forget. Uh, we're moving those into the square foot garden because the plant doesn't get very big. So these are like the small, you know, pinky finger sized or a little bit smaller, uh, really hot peppers. And we got these seeds from Stephanie's mom, Janet. And hopefully we can grow some more this year from the same seed packet. After that, we've got buttercrunch lettuce, buttercrunch lettuce, more heirloom mix lettuce, another one of those red like watermelon radishes, and then one of my personal favorites, we've got parsnips. Um, last year we did the Harris early model parsnip. That's not available this year from Jung's, Young's, whatever. Uh, so I got this one instead. Um, it's supposed to mature a little bit more quickly, so um, you know we'll, we'll see how it grows, but. Um, I, last year we ended up with like carrot sized parsnips, which, you know, were, were nice to have, but I'm hoping to get some big parsnip sized ones this year. Uh, these, these take like three months to grow or no, sorry, four months, 120 days. So we got to start them early and then we want them to be harvested like right, right around the first frost. So it's kind of a balancing act, but yeah, we'll see. Here I've got another set of parsnips, and you notice that the dates, the planting dates on these are a week off. It's sort of to hedge my bets about that frost date. Uh, after that, we've got more heirloom lettuce, and then down here, return of broccoli. As I mentioned, we got ahead of broccoli last year, which was really fun. Um, but that was, you know, like a spring slash summer broccoli. And, you know, the, the people I listen to on the radio, Garden Talk on WPR, they talk about fall broccoli like it's some kind of transcendentally delicious vegetable. So we're going for a fall crop this year, but we're going to use the same hybrid as last year, Everest, and the same seed packet. Okay, uh, after that we've got more beets, the same hybrid, the Boro hybrid that we were growing in the spring. I set aside a plot for radishes in the fall because last year we didn't have any, so more of the Roxanne radishes. And then the chives, which, again, hopefully will be there all season. Okay, in the new bed, uh, the first... yeah, the, These plants were spacing them out a lot. We'll probably plant some smaller things around them, but it's, it's much less dense than the square foot beds. In this first spot, we're going to do uh, banana peppers, which I, I don't love, <laughs> but we got free seeds with our order this year from Jung's. So we're gonna try growing them. You can see that there's, uh, you know, based on their level of maturity, ripeness, there's a bunch of different colors. You can get this yellow or orange or red. So yeah, we'll see what happens. I, you know, maybe we'll get some pickled peppers. That'd be, that'd be kind of fun. Uh, the next one, we're gonna try the Saucy Lady Hybrid Roma Tomato again. Last year, this was in a container, and it got super duper diseased, like blossom end rot and blight. I mean, it was really, it was, we got a few tomatoes off of it, but nothing like, you know, it didn't live up to its potential. So this year, we're going to plant it in the ground, in a raised bed that's, you know, in the ground, and hopefully that'll give it, you know, 
more consistent water and that will lead to a healthier plant. In the next one, we're going to do the Emerald Fire Hybrid Pepper, which is the jalapeno that we grew last year in a container. It also got blossom end rot last year, but not all the fruits got it. And it did pretty well. We, we got a decent harvest out of it anyway. So again, this year we're going to put it into the ground, give it you know better growing conditions, and hopefully get a better harvest. After that, we've got the Brandywine Tomato. This is a gigantic plant that just took over the east bed last year. So this year we're putting it in this new bed to give it more space. These are big, red, um, somewhat variegated tomatoes. Um, we're going to have to put some kind of support or trellis for it because it's supposed to be a vining tomato. And I haven't figured out exactly what that's going to look like yet, but we've still got quite a bit of time <laughs> until it's growing season. Okay, next is, uh, or, or is it R, next R, Brussels sprouts. Uh, uh, this is something we're excited about. We're going to try new this year. Uh, we're, we chose the Franklin hybrid. And the, these just like the parsnips take forever to, to mature, 80 to 100 days, you can see right here. And also just like the parsnips, we want these to be maturing right around when it starts to frost outside because they're supposed to taste better that way. So we'll see how that goes. I'm excited to try it. We really love Brussels sprouts. Okay, the last one. I expect this to be a failure, uh, but I think it sounds fun anyway. This is the b bonus hybrid corn, and it's not meant to be grown to maturity and eaten like corn on the cob. It's meant to be harvested small. You can kind of recognize the shape maybe. Harvested small and pickled for use in like stir fries. Uh, so I love those baby corns that are in stir fries, and I'm, I'm eager to see if we can make some of our own. Um, we're going to have to grow a few plants in this plot because they've got to cross-pollinate. You know, I, I don't, you know, we might not get any actual edible corn, but it'll be fun to give it a shot. And it matures really quickly. So, you know, if you lose a month, you're not really out much. You can use the space for something else. Okay, that is it for today. That's the virtual garden tour. And um, I'll be back in, oh, you know, the next month or so, hopefully, with a, uh, a tour of our seed starting space in the basement. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.